Welcome back to Favaloro Foundation University Hospital in Buenos Aires, in Argentina. Thank you again to Mainstream for having us for this uh, uh, terrific uh, educative project. So it's here with me on my right side, Dr. Lev Franco, who is our fellows, our technicians, uh, Kevin, uh, Hernan, uh, uh, Matias, Lorena is a technician from Metronic. Behind the screen is uh, Gustavo, Alberto, and Claudio. Carmen Gomez is our doctor anesthesiologist, and Mariano is the anesthetic uh, tank. We have prepared, uh, I think it's an, an interesting case uh, uh, for today. We will present uh, the first slide. So this is a case uh, for uh, T-Bar. This is the title, next. So she is a very young lady, 52, with cr chronic type, actually A, aortic dissection with severe aortic dilatation on the thoracic aorta with more than six centimeters. I say A because it was a repair. So she suffered from the Marfan syndrome. She had a type A aortic dissection 10 years ago. She underwent surgical repair with aortic valve sparing with Tyron David procedure plus ascending an aortic arc replacement with an elephant trunk uh, using the Borst uh, technique according to the surgical team uh, uh, description. She uh, received an ascending aortic graft of uh, 30 millimeters on diameter with the aortic arc of about 24 and an elephant trunk of 24 and also 24 in length. So she remained with a chronic uh, type, like type B, but it's actually a residual type A aortic dissection under clinical management for uh, almost 10 years. And she did really well until the last uh, control where we found a significant uh, uh, dilatation of the thoracic aorta. So she also uh, had a significant or severe uh, thoracic uh, deformation you will see on the CT scan and she also suffered from uh, an infection uh, disease and when she was uh, young with the remaining bronchiectasias in his uh, pulmon, uh, in his uh, lung, sorry. Next. So the ACG is uh, quite normal, but with the first degree AB block, probably after the surgery, blood test uh, a little bit anemic, well, with nothing special about there. With the body max index very low, she is very thin, very short. And on the echo Doppler, she is also under, follow, under clinical follow-up because she is suffering from a significant hourly regurgitation with a mild mitral regurgitation, with a preserved left ventricular ejection fraction, uh, totally asymptomatic. So it was uh, an important point because uh, for the heart uh, team discussion, it was uh, this issue considered to, uh, I mean, suggest this uh, T-bar procedure instead of uh, reoperation. She is no, she doesn't have any frailty characteristic, and of course the procedure is not uh, futile. Next. So this is the CT. You can observe there the significant, uh, I mean, uh, thoracic deformation with the pectum excavatum, a significant pectum excavatum. Uh, it's uh, really, uh, I mean, astonishing when we observe this thorax and how she underwent the surgery. You can see there that the distance between the posterior uh, uh, face of the esternum is about uh, uh, six or seven centimeters from the anterior uh, vertebra. Next. So there we observe the significant dissection after this the elephant trunk. We made some measurements. The diameter is according with the surgical uh, description between 24 and 28 with a length of uh, 2.5 centimeters. There is an indentation there that nobody knows exactly what uh, is uh, this, uh, or what is producing this finding on the CT scan, but it's probably a surgical, uh, I mean, uh, um, remaining you know, of something related with the previous surgery in the connection of the graft. Next. We observed there, sorry, in, uh, in the previous slide, that uh, we have at least uh, three flaps there, or two flaps there, uh, 
is uh, an helical flap with significant deformation of the aorta uh, uh, from the very beginning in the, with the significant angulation also uh, in the zone 2, between zone 2 and zone 3. Next. So there is uh, with a little zoom where you can observe probably we have a landing zone between two and three after the subclavian of two centimeter. Our idea is to go exactly between this indentation and the subclavian artery. We will discuss then with uh, Dr. Lev next. There you observe the, the severe dilatation of the aorta, which is the indication of uh, treatment after 10 years. And on the right of the panel, the significant also scoliosis of this uh, uh, um, uh, column. And, and there is significant communication between the through and the false lumen there. And uh, anyway, this is uh, the indication of why we uh, indicate uh, this treatment after uh, 10 years of being uh, asymptomatic. Next. There is uh, quite of 3D reconstruction where we observe this flap with a significant communication in the proximal part, probably uh, uh, in, the, in the distal uh, landing zone, there is a significant re-entry. Uh, that we will try to uh, seal, not uh, only the, the, the entry tier, uh, uh, distal to the subclavian, and then uh, also the distal uh, re-entry uh, near the um, celiac trunk. Next. So in the, on, the, on the previous slide, what we observed that the aorta distally to the dissection is uh, 28 or 29 uh, millimeters. So this is important for the uh, device that we are going to use uh, distally. Next. So this is the vascular axis. The right femoral artery is quite normal, uh, straight uh, with, without significant calcification, uh, with a good diameter, almost uh, 10 millimeters. Next. So this is a 3D reconstruction of uh, what we observe with this uh, uh, dilatation, especially in the, in the aortic, uh, I mean distally to the aortic arc, but continuing until the transition of the thorax and the abdomen. Next, so this is 20 centimeters. Probably we have to cover a little bit longer than 20 due to the angulation. So in summary, it's a young lady with previous ascending aortic arc replacement, complicated with severe dilatation of the thoracic aorta, with severe asymptomatic aortic regurgitation and the heart team discussion, with the, especially with the surgical uh, group, they decided to try this uh, endovascular procedure as the first option, instead of uh, considering any other hybrid or, or open uh, surgical repair. Next. Proxima. So the strategy uh, that we have already planned was the percutaneous access with the left uh, subclavian preservation if we can, but we are going to, to go aggressively. We are going to go uh, almost over the subclavian ostium. And then the plan is to implant probably two thoracic uh, endografts. Next. So the landing zone that uh, is uh, supposed to be there between two and three where the elephant trunk uh, or surgical elephant trunk was uh, deployed and where we have to reconnect with the descending aorta. Next. So this is uh, for other situation or something that we have discussed. We have to do something surgical to uh, I mean, preserve the subclavian artery. So the idea is uh, that it was not necessary. Actually, uh, we can comment then with Dr. Lev that we have a long experience and we have covered many subclavians and we haven't protected most of them. And to be honest, we never had a problem for covering the subclavia. When we have paraplegia or paraparesis or something like this, it was related to thoracoabdominal uh, reconstructions and not uh, to the subclavian uh, artery. Next, probably the other option uh, for this patient uh, uh, would, it would have been uh, something like this. Uh, 
the complete debranching from the ascending uh, aortic graph and then uh, uh, an endo a T bar from the zone zero uh, covering the whole uh, or the whole aortic arc and then the com all the descending aorta. But we think that we can uh, go with this uh, minimalistic approach, trying to fix it there uh, on the elephant trunk. And if we fail, but we can fail, the idea or the discussion that we have with the surgical group was if we have a residual significant endoleak, probably this patient is going to be uh, re uh, surgically repaired uh, in, a, in a way like this. So, but uh, due to all this thoracic deformation, we uh, preserve this uh, uh, option as a, an option B or rescue in case we fail today. Next. So probably, and uh, more recently in our surgical group, what they are doing with this uh, uh, type A aortic uh, dissection, compromising the aortic arc is uh, a, surgical, a surgery like this, introducing the, some new graphs like the A-beta graph, which has a longer uh, elephant trunk, which is stented and is much more easy. Uh, for reconnecting and not uh, the situation like uh, we have today. So next, so this is the case. And we, I can ask uh, Gustavo about the case and then we can discuss about we, uh, what we have already done. Well, thank you, Oscar. It is a very interesting case. Uh, we can uh, point out that uh, it's a very young patient. Usually this kind of patient with uh, connective tissue uh, disorders goes to surgery, but in this case, it's a very high risk uh, uh, surgery patient. So, uh, with a 60 millimeters diameter, orthothoracic diameter, a huge um, tear at the descender uh, aorta, only one tear, up, and uh, uh, with a high flow inside the false lumen, uh, I think that the best option is to treat it uh, with a, a with TVAR. And um, of course, if we um, have uh, an endoleic, uh, most of this patient has between 20, 26 percent of uh, endoleics. We can uh, match a second option with uh, another endovascular treatment. Uh, from the our, our ascending aorta and uh, with a fever, perhaps. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, well, uh, perhaps we can avoid surgery that is very important for these kind of patients. So for those who are not uh, so familiar with the aortic dissection or for the type A aortic dissection, uh, most of, of the patients need a second intervention during follow-up, especially during the three or five year follow-up, like the instead, the mother registry, yeah. and uh, many others from the Valian uh, or the Metronic device uh, uh, um, follow-up. For the acute aortic dissection, which are uh, intervene endovascular or surgical, almost 40% uh, of the patients need a second intervention uh, after the uh, five-year follow-up. Here, we are at 10-year follow-up. So she actually did very well. But now, the, the, we have uh, significant elements uh, to decide uh, why uh, we should treat this patient. First is the diameter of the, of the uh, descending aorta that we have already mentioned. Then is the diameter of the false lumen, which is more than four centimeters. It's another indication, uh, even if patients are asymptomatic. So we, we have already planned was to uh, put uh, uh, a seven French introducer sets on the, on the left uh, femoral artery. We have uh, put here a pacemaker for pacing for deployment. And then uh, we, will, uh, we did crossover and we uh, can show with, uh, what we have already done and what problems we faced. There is a crossover with uh, the pigtail. She has very normal artery. It was very easy to cross. Next. Then we put the pigtail to do a, a, a puncture. Uh, next, uh, under uh, floral guidance, we select the, the, the entry point near the, uh, the, in the upper part of the, of the head of the femur. Next. 
So we have decided to put the free clause we have used Prostar. This is going to be, uh, could be uh, a, a discussion point because uh, many people like the, to use pro, uh, ProLite, like Dr. Lev, uh, he likes the ProLite. And I like to use the ProStar when I, and I am using over the 18 or 20 uh, French uh, sheath uh, size. Mm -hmm. uh, without worry, you, are um, you like more the ProLite instead of ProStar, even for these cases. It it's, is easy, it's easier. So, easier. Yes, yeah. it's easy. It's more easier and uh, we are more familiar, the new generation. Sorry yeah. for that. So thank word. you for uh, calling me old. <laughs> uh, thank you, Gustavo. We are more familiar with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understood. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Uh, next, ah, sorry. Uh, on the previous uh, view, uh, we have problem because our plan was to put the six French on the left uh, uh, radial artery, but it was not possible, probably due to some trauma for the previous surgery, the radial artery was very uh, weak, uh, the pulse. So we couldn't uh, get in even uh, in the cubital artery. Gustavo is very familiar with cubital, but we couldn't. So finally, we did a puncture here. Uh, if you show my left hand behind the uh, arc here. So we are on the humeral with the uh, six French uh, introducer uh, set, as you can see there. Our plan is to, was to put the pigtail there for control, for angio control during the deployment of the graft. But we have to use a different uh, catheter uh, because the following. Next. So when we put the prostar, next, Proxima. Next. Here, it's important to see when we pull the, the needles out, it's important to see that all, the four needles are coming into the set of the device and not outside because if not, it's almost impossible to retrieve uh, the device. Next. After that, there is the maneuver. You see the needles coming into uh, the device. After that, I have four needles here, uh, sorry, four threads here that uh, can be moved as you can observe here. And then the difference with the ProGlide is that we have to do the knot in the surgical way uh, before the final of the procedure. So after we put the ProStar, we put the 11 French sheath here and we try next to go into the ascending aorta. So you can observe there the wire from below, which was impossible to find the true lumen so we introduced a SIM catheter, a SIM was uh, one or two, one. Mm. So we uh, preformed the, the catheter in the ascending aorta, as you can observe there, and then we pulled the catheter back. The tip of the catheter was inside the, the, the distal elephant trunk, and so we advanced a, a hydrophilic a white wire distally. Next. So with this maneuver, we are absolutely sure that we are inside the true lumen. Next. And then we introduce a snare from below. We snare the catheter. Unfortunately, we, we didn't show that I rotate the catheter to uh, pointing, uh, pointing out the, the, the snare, which was uh, difficult to handle the snare. And it was much easier to handle the, the, the catheter from the, from the brachial axis. We snare the wire, we pull the wire, and we uh, introduce now a pigtail. So we have a rail from here, from femoral to the humeral size. We have the two wires here. One is, this is from radial, and this is uh, from femoral. Through this uh, rail, we introduce this uh, pigtail, which is now uh, in, on, on the next, on the ascending aorta. And we are sure we are entering into, into the true lumen. Next. I'm oh, sorry. Here is how, how we advance the catheter from below, and we pull the other catheter. We went into the subclavian, and then we connect the catheter a little bit more. Next. And we push everything to be sure that the, that the pigtail catheter 
is uh, into the ascending aorta. So now I think I am ready to pull the rail. Uh, uh, hopefully the, the pigtail stay there so we can do uh, the angio and then uh, put the stiffer wire. So I will release the wire from here, from the femoral size, and I will pull from here. And I will pray, sorry, let's go to the left oblique. So we are sure there that we are on the ascending aorta. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, so now I am pulling the wire. I give it to Gustavo and Franco. The wire is out and the pigtail. Uh, keep the wire because we will need it to put the pigtail here. Mm -hmm. Give me a chave tres vías. Okay, a stop clock here. So we have the catheter also on the ascending aorta. Probably uh, we will share in a second the fusion of the CT image with the ancho image. So let's test. Okay, so here a little bit more panoramic. Uh, something like this, okay, she's very small, as you can observe, compensate. Puede no respirar, Carmen? Puede no respirar? Stop breathing. Okay, and let's go with the answer. It's perfect, beautiful. So, stop the answer there, and we can observe here some important findings. First, that what we thought it was the true lumen in the inner part of the of the aortic arc is not that true, and the, as you can observe there, the the tube is a little bit longer than expected. So probably we don't have to go too far distally against the subclavian artery. Do you agree on that? Yeah. This is the good thing. That's the bad thing is uh, when you have such a long elephant trunk, sometimes it would be extremely difficult to advance uh, the, uh, uh, the TUR device. So anyway, we have to do it. We have to try. Uh, the, the other possibility is to do a, real, a rail from the, the right subclavian but it could be very traumatic for a patient with uh, this uh, kind of the aorta. You also observe there the significant aortic regurgitation, and we will have to bear in mind because, of course, we are going to be, uh, be asked in the future about TAVI uh, in this case, and it sounds a little bit extremely difficult. Uh, so now we we will introduce here the shape wire and we will put the pigtail and then no, dame, dame la otra, la, la J. La J. so we have decided to use okay this is no and this one um a device which which has a free uh, flow uh, in the proximal end so the reason, sacalo vos Gustavo que se me sale el introductor. The reason why we have decided uh, slowly, uh, why we have decided to use this device instead of uh, the others without free flow in the proximal end is because uh, for the uh, Medtronic device, uh, is uh, the the deployment is much more precise when you have a distal free flow, because you can start deploying the device, keeping the, the free flow still attached to the, to the delivery system. And when you are ready, then you deploy the, the proximal part. If you use the non-free flow device, the opening is totally different. It's like a self-expand MS-10. And in this, uh, in such angulated uh, aorta, probably the deployment would be not uh, for 
not too much precise or as precise as we want uh, for this case. So the device we have chosen to begin with is the 32 by 200. Uh, okay, so we will prepare the device and then we will introduce the wire. Okay. And then uh, we go, we have to pull the sheath out uh, and we are going to go sheathless. Let's go with the device. Sí. Okay. Are you going to insert uh, yes, the, the, the cathode in the celiac trunk? Uh, I think we right can uh, put it uh, afterwards because okay. uh, uh, it's, a, it's a good comment. Dr. Leve asked me about uh, uh, marking the uh, celiac trunk. Uh, it's something that we are going to, to use for the second device because as you can observe there, 10 centimeters is going to be still on the curve of the aorta and the, the, the next uh, probably uh, 10 centimeters is going to be uh, still into the thorax. So uh, from our text point of view, if, we, if you can share the image of the uh, CT reconstruction, the fusion of the CT with the ancho images, it's going to be great for uh, for the audience. It's the right panel, the right uh, low panel uh, in our monitor. Not the, the floro, but uh, it's, it's a 3D reconstruction. Uh, exactly, perfect. So where you can observe from the, uh, the, the left subclavian until the, the mid part of this uh, huge de dilatation is uh, 10 centimeters 10 centimeters is going to be probably still in the uh, in the biggest part of the dilatation and then we had to deploy the second uh, device for this second deployment we are going to mark uh, the celiac trunk so now we need at least six hands so dr lev is holding the wire dr franco is holding the sheath I will introduce the wire once again, as always, we have reshaped the wire. This is the Landerquist wire, a very stiff wire. We have introduced a second bend, just trying to, I mean, configure it or adapt it to this uh, heavily angulated aorta. Fortunately, we have two vertebrals dominance, right and left. Uh, because the risk of paraplegia uh, is high in, in, in this kind of patient, we are going to use uh, two devices uh, with a, a very, very, uh, with, um, uh, to ex uh, with a very good extension. Yeah, so, long. Uh, yes. Yeah, hold it. So, uh, so I think what the Dr. Levy is saying is extremely important. You know, for uh, uh, the relationship of paraplegia is uh, with the length of the device you are, you are using, the length of the uh, aorta you are covering, the possibility of preserving the, the left subclavian has been also shown to be important. Mm -hmm. And then to prevent any hypotension uh, during deployment and after the procedure, and, uh, and then also when we are especially treating this complex uh, patient with thoracoabdominal aneurysm, we are uh, change our practice. And what we are doing now is to do in a two-step procedure on a stage. So we usually do the, the, the toughest of the more difficult part, uh, deploying the, the, the branch device, the branched or or the <clears throat> fenestrated device, and then we uh, leave one iliac artery open, and uh, we wait for some days uh, before uh, completing uh, the procedure. So now is the toughest part. Let's put the 15-15 there. The other, uh, you can go there, Franco, to inject. You can go there, yeah. The other important issue here is that uh, we have forgotten to mention if we have uh, introduced a pacemaker. Our idea is to pace in a high frequency like a tower procedure so we can stabilize um, the, the pressure 
or decrease the, the blood pressure during deployment. Now we are going to zoom to see very well we are landing with this device. So where we have this figure of eight is where the graph starts. Uh, un poquito. So I think we can go there, which was our initial plan, because after delivering, I can pull a little bit to rectificate this uh, yes. angulation. Let's inject. You have, the, you have the mark. Yeah. Of the free flow. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. So I mean, are you going to from the, the eight? to the nose cone is where we have the, uh, the, the free flow. Yeah. So we are distal to the subclavian. We are perfectly into the graft with a good, uh, I mean, uh, overlapping. Uh -huh. So I think this is a good position, yeah? Mm -hmm. So now uh, this device is released quite similar to the tower procedure. We can rotate for the, uh, the beginning of the deployment and then we can uh, deploy a little bit faster. You push it manually. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So Franco, we have contrast. We are ready to inject. Yes. We can start pacing. 180. Test. Test. I am starting there. I will keep it there. So we are going to pace at 180 per minute. In all the okay, we can stop there. Stop, stop the pacing. The pacing. I think we are okay. We can release the nose cone here. No, we can keep doing. Dale, dale, marca paso. Dale. No, 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 no way. No repositioning. So. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Stop. Uh, no, 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 no. How? There. Stop. Stop. Inject. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I am very happy with this outcome. So Clevian is preserved. You, you can observe there on the floor the pigtail. So only the free flow is over the subclavian. Mm -hmm. We are perfectly engaged into the, um, the distal elephant trunk of the surgeons. We are going to prepare the second device. I'm like, going to put another device uh, thinking in a better remodelation and prevent expansion because uh, uh, with only one device you close the tier, isn't it? Yeah, but uh, we have a yeah. Your question is very good, but we have a huge dilatation there, and we will keep uh, having flow there, so it's going to be pressurized. Uh, the idea is to seal if we can, yeah. Okay. So now uh, we can st stay here. We are quiet now. We can introduce here the, the leave the wire. Gustavo okay. Franco can prepare. We can wait a little bit. We'll introduce Camera. the cobra catheter so to identify what is the, 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 celiac, the trunk. celiac trunk. Yes. Uh, you know that there, there is a, a registry with uh, no, 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 more, no, than, no. more than 12,000 12, patients uh, noting that uh, when they compare the risk of uh, um, is, is, uh, paraplegia versus two uh, prothesis, uh, the results were better <laughs> when they they put two prothesis in order to cover all the thoracic uh, uh, aneurysm, Test, Franco. having uh, less reintervention Test. and preventing more ruptures. Um, maybe AP view, uh, anterior posterior. Let's see where is the cephalic trunk test. So nowadays, uh, the trend is uh, try to cover 
most of the aorta in order not to have more mace test. than uh, putting only one. So there is a phallic trunk test. Pone un poquito oblicuo para allá. It is very important to identify the celiac trunk test. in order to prevent one of the test. Uh, of the causes of uh, uh, paraplegia, it's like there, but closing the, engage. the celiac trunk or the mesenteric artery, test. especially in this kind of patients. Yes. I cannot. Por uh, mostrarme anterior posterior. Yes. So no, the renal the artery. Renal. Yes. Yes. Probably there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ahí. There. Uh -huh. Yes. So yeah. if we identify where is, we don't need to engage. Let okay. me show you up. Yeah. So we have a huge distance. So if we can mark this uh, vertebra there, it's probably thoracic uh, 12, I think. You this think is going to be our distant uh, landing zone upper from here. Test. Do you think it is necessary to uh, prevent? Uh, yeah, absolutely. The, the celiac trunk? This. Yeah. Uh -huh. Test, also test. But the, the important issue is to be sure where we are. Okay. Mostrame ahora uh, panoramic. Okay, let's see from here to here. So our idea is to be one vertebra after here, up of here. But anyway, we can do an inch of, I oh, know we cannot do an inch of from here. Okay. Well, you, you, you can use the pigtail. We can use oh. the pigtail from here. Yes. And we can put uh, digital subtraction. We can go once again to 30. And we can stay here to see okay. where we are. Okay. Amnea, Carmen? Checked. Okay. So we are very close. Yeah. Is it necessary to control cephalorrhic uh, uh, liquid in this kind of patient? Uh, where you, well, in you, some patients, you cover yes. The but here we are not covering the subclavian, so, so yeah. I think it's not necessary. It's not necessary. Probably no. So maybe we can stay here. We can do mapping. Uh, and in this way we can, because this catheter is too weak to stay in a position when I advance the, the I second have, device. I have a, a, a CMOS 1, if you want. Yeah, I was thinking about the SIM, but I don't know where to uh, conform the shape of SIM after okay. the employment. Okay. I have. The other catheter we can use is, the, is, a, is a mammary, the EMA. Test. 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 Okay. This is the place. Give me um, no, no, uno que no sea hidrofílico. The, the cobra. No hidrofílico? Okay. Give me, let me do it. Well, okay. Give me the, J the wire. wire. Mm -hmm. We will try with another catheter with the internal mammary or non hydrophilic one. If we can identify better, it's going to be okay. If not, we can go there. Okay. Me puedes frisar la última arriba? Please, we will freeze here. Uh, stop there. There, there. Ahora ponele hueso. Great. 
So now we have a bone marker. Okay. Let's see. If we are lucky enough with this. Oh, with double test. Yeah. Oh, test. A ver, oblicu izquierda. Mm -hmm. To be sure we are on the anterior wall. More, more, mass, more. Test. 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 There. Ahí. Okay. This is okay. Okay, we will leave it there, but anyway, I know that I'm going to lose this position. Um, stay there. We are okay there. Okay, so we'll prepare the 36 now, or 34? Okay, perfect. Uh, in this uh, kind of patients, are you going to uh, oversize 20% as we use it uh, every day in this kind of procedures, or... Uh, or not? Probably yes, but being not too much aggressive with the patients with the uh, Marfan syndrome. Uh -huh. uh, you can uh, okay. help uh, Franco while I am talking here. So the other issue is we are using, sorry for the noise, uh, uh, once again the free flow uh, proximal in this case because this patient has an aortic repair before. If not, for sure, it's going to be a patient to be treated with a non-free flow device. More, moreover, we are not using too much uh, uh, T-bar procedure for uh, Marfan syndromes. We, here in the hospital, no, no. Pro, uh, most of the patients are uh, surgery is uh, indicated. So now I am close the device. So uh, with this maneuver, I try to prevent any damage of the, fem of the common femoral artery during a retrieval. You have to be very cautious because we are going shiftless and we don't want to destroy the, the femoral artery. So Franco, be careful because it's going to bleed. Now you have to hold near the... there. Once again, be the careful. The second this doesn't have free flow. Yes, this second one is without free flow. So with this device, I'm going to be careful about the distal and landing zone and not so much about the proximal landing zone. Why? Because for sure we need, we have a space. We don't have to care too much about that, but this is the, at least the minimal overlapping that we have to have. Anyway, I think it's not going to be, uh, we are not going to, uh, seal the the whole aorta so there be probably it's okay so this I, one the, the the we are going to pacing pace it, i guess 180 is that perfect and now i have to open the first part. Uh, probably it's moving. No, eh, a 10 está la salida. Now, okay. Perfect. So now I'm going to deploy under pacing you see this is the movement i want to prevent when I, I was doing the proximal part okay stop we are done okay lo más panorámico posible Okay, just one touch there. Okay, very gentle touch there. Yeah, yes.
and let's go and don't breathe. Stop breathing. Yeah, okay. Let's go. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. Better. We still have some uh, leakage there, but I think it's uh, probably porosity because you don't see a feeling from uh, uh, proximally. Proximally. Yeah. Sure. I think we are okay. We are done. Uh, show me the AP view, the frente. So now we might change the wire, Gustavo, with the J wire. Okay. La J, ¿dónde está? Uh, we still have some minutes here before crossing to the other room. Give me. No, 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 it's okay there. Okay, here are okay. So, light, el, esta es light. No, no, no la de allá. Yeah. Hold it, Franco. Hold, hold. So, please, Gustavo, retrieve the balloon, leaving the wire yeah. there. Okay, so now it's time to tie the, the knot. Revertimos por completo. Heparin reversion completely. Let me close. Okay, we are almost done. Hold it. We are tied the second one. And then we can go contralateral for balloon and so on. Yeah. Perfect. No, 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 no. Here. Inside the circle. Yeah. In water. Release. Perfect. So. Now, uh, Dr. Gustavo is going to cross over with the balloon like we usually do for um, TAVI or any other procedure. We can uh, hold the groin a little bit. We don't have too much bleeding, you see, uh -huh. just oozing. Okay. We wait for the heparin reversion, inflate the balloon for three or four minutes, okay. and then we are done. So I think this is a very nice demonstration of uh, the T-bar case, a very complex case. Uh, I think all this preparation that we did before was important because it helps uh, helped a lot. Yeah, all right. we agree on that. Congratulations. So thank you so much. Um, I'm going to move for the second case. Thank you, Gustavo. Thank you, Franco, thank Carmen. You.